right? So, to one of their booths they wrote, the new, Google has a new, when the Pixel phone came out, they wrote a quiz question about the Pixel phone, it was. The best feature of the new Pixel phone is, it's very bright screen, it's long battery life, C, it's lightweight, or D, all of the above. <laughs> that ain't that for phone, because you all know the answer. We've all taken half-assed question, quiz questions like that. <laughs> you don't even read it. You, your eye immediately picks up all of the above. You look at, you don't even think, it's not processing. You've got to work. And you've got to ask questions that challenge the heck out of your learner. And those are hard. I, I write for the, for the Educational Testing Service, EDS. So I'm one of the authors of the graduate record exam. Um, we collectively, there's a team of typically three or four of us, we probably put in between us eight to 10 hours per question. That's how much work goes in it. Now, uh, it's, and we're professionals at it. And that's how much, it's really hard to write good assessment. But we train organizations to do it because it's a fundamental capacity. You've got to know how to write things that evoke effortful recall. Cognitive reinforcement, the last thing, because I don't want to miss this point. Doing something, I can point you to software tools, I can point you to how to use Google Docs and Google Forms and Gmail. You can do it for free. If you're a small enough group, you can do it all for free. You don't need a software tool. Doing something. Doing anything is so much better than doing nothing. Even if you don't have the gold standard solution, what you do is you do something. And then you reinforce your people, you do cognitive reinforcement in the hours and days afterwards. Then you take some feedback data and you go to your supervisor and say, hey, listen, look, look at what people are saying. Look at the data I'm getting. Look at the improvement I'm getting. We need to make this a foundational part of a modern training program. We've got to find ways to get to integrate. Doing anything is so much better than doing nothing. Even if you don't follow the optimal 222 methodology and all that, doing something will dramatically enhance retention. All right, the second part. The 222, the second part is social reinforcement. 222 refers to two days, two weeks, and two months. And I'll show you what I'm doing with it. At two days, I begin my cognitive reinforcement, and I'll set out three, typically three, maybe four boosts. That reinforces the long-term retention of the information. Okay? Two days. Reinforce the cognitive side. At two days, at two weeks, I start social reinforcement. And I send out a question to my learners, but it's a discussion question. And for example, I'll send out we did a um, anger management curriculum for a very large retailer. And we trained them how to deal with grumpy customers. I think it was, it was a pretty cool um, training seminar. I'm not, by the way, I should say I'm out of the business. I'm back to being a professor, so I, I was a developer and a vendor. I'm not anymore, so that might increase credibility here. I guess. <laughs> I so I have nothing to sell you. Um, so we, we, we train people on how to, how to deal with grumpy customers. And the first, starting at two days, I sent them a series of cognitive boosts so they wouldn't forget the techniques. At two weeks, I started sending them social boosts that said, hey, listen, what's your best strategy for dealing with, a, with an elderly person who is really angry with you? Now, it's kind of a special application of the training we had given to them. It forced them to think about it. And the associate in California, she types in her answer. Sorry, associate in Michigan, he types in his. The next day when New York goes in to type in his answer, he sees California, he sees Michigan, he upvotes, he comments. And all of a sudden, I've got a bunch of 20-something retail employees asking to go back to their e-learning experience because they're involved in a discussion to optimize the approach. And you get an engagement. And I, this is, goodness, this is the truth. I did this for Nike. I'm, a, I'm in Portland, Oregon. So Nike is right around the corner from So we did this with their retail, retail employees. And 
we were asking them about how to, how how are shoe sales in these different stores? You know, we have all these different product lines, ridiculously overpriced shoes, and how do you sell them best? Well, our store associates were giving these feedback, which were really really good. Some of them were some of them were funny, but some of the kids were saying really useful things. The vice president, who runs the running list at Nike, would go and check because now they, the the employees comment on each other's, somebody makes a comment, and then they upload and so forth, so they vet each other's comments. The stuff that floats to the top is really good. And the vice president, the guy in charge of the ring list, goes to that list every two weeks to harvest the best ideas. So if you are establishing a relation, if you are boosting your learners, hours and days after training, the first method is at two days, Starting at two days, cognitively reinforce it. At two weeks, begin this social thing where they begin talking with each other, optimizing their approaches. At two months, when do behavioral reinforcement? This one is, there's not the time to talk about the stuff we were doing. I can't talk about stuff we're doing at Google, but I, I, did, I wish there were more time. But what I can tell you is, with a very large retailer, we were trying to get we sent out a quiz question in two months, and that quiz question was, hey, listen, can you give me, well, two months ago I gave you a, a, a session on anger management with customers. Can you give me an example how you have used that material to help the organization? We get responses to that question like, gee, I was on the floor and this, this, this lady came in, she was really angry with me. And I started arguing, but then I remembered your training, and I used it, and I sold a washing machine. <laughs> That's gold. Because we get about 200 of those a week. This is a big retail company. We get 200 of those a week. And what our chief learning officer does is takes that stack of testimonials and walks down the hall to the chief financial officer and says, remember that budget you gave me for anger management? Here's what it bought us. Here's how, order, how training is not simply parasitic. Here is a return on investment we bring to the organization. This is why we're training. This is what we're accomplishing. We have a follow-up program, and this is what we're accomplishing. That's where respect comes from. And if we as a training organization, if we want respect, we have to show them the contribution to the bottom line. Otherwise, we're perceived as kind of one of these annoying things that doesn't work very well. And you know what? We don't work very well. We just don't. We're not training in ways that are consistent with the way the brain learns and retains. And it's not rocket science. Um, your after training program, you can deliver. Um, let's not worry about this one. If you want to learn more, I'm going to do, I have a neuroscience academy. It's all free. I'll give you a way to sign up if you're interested in learning about some of the stuff you do. Again, you're going to get access to the slide deck and everything else. So I've got a neuroscience academy where we're talking about some very cool phenomena, how to maximize learning and retention. Um, I publish like crazy. I've got lots of stuff in learning solutions and training, um, talent development, the AATB journal. There's plenty of stuff. Um, the videos are online. LinkedIn, reach out. Feel free. If this stuff is of interest to you, feel free to reach out. Um, I'm going to go, as is my custom, I'm going to be, if people want to talk about this stuff afterwards, if you want to talk about the particular challenges you have, I'm going to go to Stack Restaurant tonight, 5.30 to 8, and just sit there. So we've done this in the past. It's a nice way to meet each other and we can talk and go through this stuff. So I'll be at Stack between 5.30 and 8. Just stop by for a little while before we talk with you.